So first up is Dan Drew Lee, who's from uh, Equinix. And so if you could please welcome DJ to the stage. Great. So thank you. Sure. Thank you, DJ, for coming all the way out here. Appreciate you joining us here live in Seattle. How are you doing this morning? Doing great. Okay. It's my pleasure to be here. Great. Well, I thought what I would do is, is start off with you because, yeah, interestingly enough, you're both a customer of F5 as well as Nginx. Right. And we'll touch on that in a second. But maybe before we even get into it, could you help us understand a little bit more what does Equinix do and a little bit about your role there? Sure. Um, Equinix is a global interconnection and then co-location data center companies. We have about over 200 data centers in 52 metro markets, and we're still building data centers to keep up with the um, demand in the market. And all our data centers are interconnected with each other to provide a global platforms. And on these global platforms, our customers can connect with each other securely to network service providers and to public clouds in order to enjoy that high bandwidth and low latency connectivities. And then also, um, one of the things I want to point out, in addition to the space and power and also global connectivities that we're providing right now, we're in the process of building new services that we can offer to our customers to allow them to build their digital infrastructures globally. So my team at Equinix is to help the companies to uh, build those new edge services products in the domain of security, data, and then compute. OK. Great. So would you describe that as, is it a development team? Is it a DevOps team? Is it somewhere in between? We actually have all those functions in the teams. So we have uh, developers, and we also have engineers take care of DevOps. Um, we have SRE engineers. And we have uh, network engineers to help us to take care of the net ops as well. OK. Great. So I'm sure many of you use Equinix. I know it's a, it's a very broadly used uh, company. So I appreciate you doing that background. Uh, maybe you could get into a little bit, uh, what are some of the challenges you faced? And what brought you to Nginx? Why would you be here at Nginx Conf joining us? Sure. Um, actually, there is a long list of uh, challenges, right? <laughs> And then also for any engineering teams, which is building uh, new products. And I think majority, some of those challenges will be common across the board. Uh, so before I dive into talking about the challenges, probably I'll give a little bit background on what we're building, because that will help us to set up the right context of some of those challenges and how we, how we approach them. So everything that we're building right now is, will be made as a service offerings to our customers, whether it's uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or it's a software as a service. So that's a de facto model for us to provide the products to customers. And then because of that, and then we have to deal with, have abilities to deal, make sure that our services will be able to support multi-tenancies. And they have to because all our customers are enterprise customers. So from security perspective, we need to make sure that they will be able to meet the enterprise security requirements. And then also, as Kara was mentioning, um, I, th I think nowadays enterprises are being spoiled by the experience brought by cloud. <laughs> that means uh, between the cloud, the, the code to the customers, right? That, uh, that process now is the, um, becomes shortened, right? So instead of in the past, when you try to get enterprise-facing services or features, you can wait a month to get it. But nowadays, people are, the expectation is pretty high. Now, it's the, in days, you have to deliver it. Right? So that's the big backdrop of what we are doing. And then the challenges that we were facing um, are both actually in the technical side and also some of the non-technical challenges. So the first the biggest challenge is like any engineering team probably is facing is you always have a really tight deadlines. And then you always have really constrained resource and the budget. And you need to make things happen. Right? So what does that mean? Um, it means that we have to em embrace the open source communities, tap into the great projects out there. And then we also need to look for solutions which have much shorter, steep, um, and then less steep learning curves. Make sure that we have some of the experience in the teams who can cover that as well. 
And then because of the budget constraint, that means when we offer the as a service models to our customers, we need to make sure that upfront cost is low. So we're looking for a very uh, flexible cost models to allow us to do it and then ramp up, up as we scale the systems. And then the second challenge, um, you can relate to the eight or nine steps, eight steps that Kara was sharing earlier, right? Um, we were looking for a scalable solution like that that will help us to put all the eight, seven to eight steps together um, in order, uh, instead of we have to piecemeal everything and then take care of all the stuff. So the, sev the, the different functionalities that we were looking at, uh, first one is um, Kubernetes ingress controllers. Because we, we made the decision to containerize as much as possible, and the, all the new applications that we are developing right now are microservices. And so it's the is a first top priority for us to make sure that we have a good solution for that. And then also, um, at the same time, we're looking at WAF integration, um, dynamic configurations, um, web servers, caching, API health check, monitoring, API gateways, the list go on. Um, so we were looking at one single scalable solution, um, at most two, in order to help us to keep the um, operational complexity down as well. And the third one is going back to the DevOps agilities. So we, don't, we no longer have a um, month in order to deliver new features. We have to deliver things within days' timeframes. And it's very important for us to choose any solutions that we choose to include in the pro um, product development. We need to make sure that it will align with that objectives. And so based on those requirements, um, we selected multiple solutions. Mm -hmm. And I think Kara also gave some of the names out there. And we did multiple POCs. And then at the end, uh, we decided to go with NGX. Um, I'm going to quote the word that my DevOps lead likes to use, um, Swiss Army knife. Mm -hmm. um, so to us, NGX is the um, Swiss Army knife that help us to address the number of the functionalities that I was mentioning earlier. And then the other big reasons for us to choose NGX is actually the great support and then the technical expertise the team brings to the tables. And I think that's extremely important for a service providers like us who are looking at delivering services to our customers with four, four nines, five nines, or some cases is six nines. So the full commitment from the solution provider's perspective is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And to have that high caliber of the technical expertise in place to make sure that we get the necessary support we need is, is one of the major decision factors for us to choose a partner or to choose a vendor to work with. OK. Great. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, and hopefully that helps kind of tie some of the things we said a little bit earlier, right? I mean, this, this, this concept of the data path between your code and customer, some of it's closer to the network, some of it's closer to the application. So it sounds right. like you're using Nginx there. But you do use F5 as well. So maybe you could just touch a little bit about where, where does F5 or maybe even Big IP or some of those technologies sit in your stack? Right. Um, that's a great question. Um, when I first joined Aquinix, um, we only had Big IP, right? Uh, we use uh, Big IP to provide the global traffic management on the IT side as well as uh, the customer portal side. And then recently, my team started working on building those microservices. This is the time we started to introduce NGX and have the NGX Plus as the de facto options for us to build those um, cluster of applications. But what we really want to see happening is that end-to-end -end experience that potentially now with the acquisition um, into the F5 families is going to enable. Right. And I was asked, I mentioned earlier that within my teams, we have DevOps, we have NetOps. So basically, we can see the pain points from both sides. And then we see the benefits of combining these two together. So one of the things that we're exploring with FI teams and the NGX teams right now is to come up with a solutions that is going to um, combine these two uh, products or multiple products together from FI families. Uh, one option is to use uh, um, Big Fi, um, the, the F5 Big IPs, to handle more of a, um, 
the south and the north traffic mm. and to provide the uh, advanced WAF support, the DDoS mitigation, SSL orchestrations. And, and then that's more of a uh, front end. Mm -hmm. And then when we come closer to the application side, we're exploring still use NGLX, uh, NGLX Plus to provide the, the uh, address the different requirements from the application perspectives. Great. All right, and I appreciate that. And that's a common pattern we see with a lot of folks uh, is that sort of that core front end is usually the heavier lifting is going to be done in, in an F5 and a big IP. Yeah. And then closer to the application where you need a little bit more of that agility that's right. done in Nginx. So that's great. So I think earlier you mentioned some of the challenges, uh, great detail on what you're actually doing. What would you describe are some of the value you get out of your Nginx investment? What is it that helps you at the end of the day accomplish? Um, so the key values that we we get from NGX, I, I think they can be grouped into two categories, right? One is on the technical side, like the word that I used earlier, uh, Swiss Army knife. <laughs> um, so that will help us to simplify the complexity, and especially from operations perspectives, and and then also. Um, provide the DevOps agility that we were looking for. Of course, in addition to all the, uh, the usual stuff, and then also performance and scalability um, uh, requirements that we already have. Um, the other key values that we get out of uh, um, working with NGX teams is that trusted advisor that we're getting for building the new services going forward. Um, we always say that it takes a, a, a village to raise a child. <laughs> um, I will say also take a village, a, a huge, a, a big community, to build a new product offerings. Nowadays, product building is not about you build everything from scratch. It's about how you take advantage of what's available in the open source communities and take all the helps that you can get from other partners and the vendors. And then you add the most value adding components on top of it. And then so from that perspective, the business perspective, we see um, NGX as that trusted advisor and partners for us to work with to launch those new products into the market. Right. That's great. And I appreciate that. And I think, you know, if I, if I play it back a little bit, what I'm hearing is not only do you get some of the complexity reduction, which is great, but then also some of those time to market advantages, That's right. which is... I think critical to providing those services that Gus talked about and then also eliminating some of those code to customer delays. Okay, so that's great. Um, I guess I would, it sounds like Nginx is pretty strategic or critical to what you're doing. Is that a fair classification? Can you maybe talk a little bit about your rely, how you rely on Nginx? That's right. So I think I will, I think those are the two exact words that I'm going to use to describe the, um, how important, Aquinix, um, how important Aquinix is treating NGX solutions. And then from the strategic side, uh, one of the um, solutions or a product that we'll, we already launched into the market is an IV marketplace. And then so from that perspective, we also consider uh, NGX to be a very strategic partner. So we can um, allow our customers to be able to enjoy the benefits of NGX. Okay, great. So I think that gets through kind of the core of what I wanted to accomplish. Thank you for coming out. I do have a couple kind of questions before I maybe let you go. Um, what advice do you have for us as Nginx? Is there anything you'd want to say to us and, and the executive team that's all here in attendance? Um, I think some of those were already addressed um, during Gus and Kara's presentation. Um, how to bridge the divide between uh, DevOps and the NetOps and then provide that true end-to-end -end experience. And specifically from my team perspective, we would love to see more um, advanced API gateway features. Um, and then we'll also like to see that to be done in more elegant and uh, modulized ways mm -hmm. so that we'll be able to allow our service developers to be able to push out those uh, um, new services without having to really understand the complexity of the NGX internally. Okay. Um, and then also the other part that I would suggest is to um, put more advanced features into the WAF. Okay. Now with all the um, advanced uh, um, security um, technology you guys have on the FI side, I'm pretty sure that task will not be that challenging. Excellent. Well, I know our product folks are backstage, so they're probably furiously taking notes as you write, so I appreciate that.
Uh, I think, look, in the closing seconds, the one last thing I would like to do um, is what advice do you have for the audience? And it could be about anything. It doesn't have to be about technology or Nginx, but is there any kind of parting words you want to give to those who are tuned in? Um, so I think the first one that I will have is um, engaging and start the conversation with the Nginx teams um, early in the offering. I think we made, now looking back in the past several months, uh, we went through the, a very intensive um, software development cycles. One of the decisions that we felt like we, uh, that was absolutely right for us is to talk to you guys very early on. Um, I wish that the conversation would have happened even earlier than what we did, um, but I think that's, a, that's one of the advice that we'll have. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank you so much, DJ, for joining us here in Seattle and telling your story. Hopefully the audience enjoyed it as much. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.